anterior inferior cerebellar artery most often arises from the basilar artery and supplies the lateral tegmentum of the lower two-third of the pons and the ventrolateral cerebellum. I will focus on the anterior inferior cerebellar artery here. So this is the left vertebral artery. Here is the right vertebral artery. The two vertebral arteries combine to form the basilar artery. You can see the posterior inferior cerebellar artery here which comes directly from the vertebral artery and you see the anterior inferior cerebellar artery coming off the basilar artery. So this is the basilar artery and you see the origin of the anterior inferior cerebellar artery which is also known as ICA. This is an axial section of the pons seen on an MRI. You see the basilar artery here. So this is the basilar artery which lies anterior to the pons and you have the fourth ventricle which is on the posterior aspect of the pons. So this is to give you some orientation. I will draw the different structures to illustrate the effect of an anterior inferior cerebellar artery stroke on a patient. So the sixth nerve nuclei lie around this area here. So the si these are the six nerve nuclei and the fascicle of the six nerve nuclei moves and leaves the pons on the anterior aspect. You have the seventh nerve nucleus somewhere around here and this seventh nerve nucleus the seventh nerve fascicle goes around the sixth nerve puts a dent on the wall of the fourth ventricle and leaves the pons around here. So you have the seventh nerve nucleus here moves around the sixth nerve nuclear puts a dent on the wall of the fourth ventricle and leaves here and these dents here these are called the facial colliculi. Then you have the vestibular nuclei located somewhere around here you have the sympathetic fibers also in the same distribution. You have the spinal tract and the nucleus of the fifth nerve located around this area. You have the spinothalamic tract. So the spinothalamic tracts are also somewhere around in this area here. When a person has a stroke a stroke related to occlusion of the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, these are the structures that are involved. This is approximate area that is involved. As you can see here, the middle cerebellar peduncle, so the middle cerebellar peduncle is this connection between the pons and the cerebellum so this is the middle cerebellar peduncle so obviously the fibers of the middle cerebellar peduncle are also involved with the anterior inferior cerebellar artery stroke so what is the result of an anterior inferior cerebellar artery stroke so let's start here so since we since the patient has vertigo and nystagmus you can start localizing that this can localize to the vestibular nuclei which, is, which are in the pons, but you may recall that the anterior inferior cerebellar artery also has a branch which is called the internal auditory artery which supplies the labyrinth. So occlusion of this artery can also lead to vertigo and nystagmus. The patient can present with deafness and tinnitus which can be related to the cochlear nuclei or cochlear nerve patient has ipsilateral ataxia which is most often related to the middle cerebellar peduncle stroke. S involvement of the cerebellar hemisphere will give similar findings. Ipsilateral Horner syndrome is related to the involvement of the sympathetic fibers. Contralateral decrease in pain and temperature sensation is related to the involvement of the spinothalamic tract and ipsilateral lower motor neuron type facial weakness is related to the involvement of the 
fascicle or the fascicle of the seventh cranial nerve. And finally, ipsilateral decrease in pain and temperature sensation on the face is related to the stroke in involving spinal tract and nucleus of the fifth nerve. You should remember that all structures may not be involved. It, the stroke may only involve part of these structures. Sometimes these strokes are also associated with involvement of the perforating branches of the basilar artery. So if you think of the perforating branches going here, this area control, this area has the corticospinal tracts involved. So in that instance, anterior inferior cerebellar artery stroke can also be associated with contralateral weakness. That's it for today. Thank you.